Hey, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing seven tips that make my life as a photographer a whole lot easier. Because you have a lot of files, a lot of gear, stress before a photo shoot. You're sort of the art director, the producer, the photographer, the editor, all at the same time. So in this video, I'm gonna quickly run you through these seven tips and tricks. Because that way there's actually more time to focus on taking the photos, but let's get into it. All right, number one being storage. As a photographer, you have a ton of SD cards, or at least I do, and I lose them every minute of the day, and it's super frustrating. I bought this little case, and then on one side, I have all the empty SD cards, and on the other side, SD cards that are full or still need to be transferred. This was literally $8. I found it off Amazon. It keeps my life organized because it's all in one place. And I've also linked all these little gadgets in the description so you can easily find what I'm talking about. Number two, and this is a problem that every photographer is either gonna run into or has experienced, and that is accidentally formatting your SD cards with all the footage on it that you shot on the shoot before. Yeah, but I went on Google and typed in, what do I do if I accidentally format my card? And then I came across Ease US, and this is a software that you can download, and then when you plug in your SD card in your computer, it actually gets back all your footage, even from like four shoots ago. But the only downside is, is that you have to pay, I think $80 upfront. <laughs> But in my opinion, it's worth it because there's nothing more annoying than losing your footage. So this program can definitely help you out. Number three, another little storage hack. I recently got my hands on this one. It is a little Pelican case and I store all my hard drives in here. So when I go to my office or I go work in a cafe, I just chuck my hard drives in here and they're all protected. All right, let's get into number four. So have you ever done a photo shoot and you shot all the photos and you get behind your laptop and you see that your sensor was dirty? So you have to Photoshop all the black dots and spots out of your photos and it takes ages yeah been there done that but i found out a really handy trick that you can check if your sensor is dirty just by using your camera and a white sheet of paper so the first thing you're gonna do is turn on your camera and then turn it into aperture priority mode then make sure your camera is in the lowest iso so that's for me 100 and then the highest aperture so the highest number then turn on manual focus and focus on a white sheet so make sure your camera's fully out of focus. Then take the photo and look at the photo on your computer, but this way you can exactly see if your sensor is dirty. And as you can see, mine is definitely due for a clean. All right, number five being Mila Notes. And this is a new software I've been using and I'm excited to talk about it because I feel like it's such a refreshing program. So for bigger concept shoots, I like to have an organized plan because as you know, the pre-production can be quite hectic. Finding an outfit, a location, sorting out the model. So Mila Notes is an easy to use tool that I use to plan my creative photo shoots so you can choose out of different templates and I decided to go for the photography mood board and that looks like something like this so at the moment I'm planning a mysterious umbrella shoot I start off with adding inspirational photos and I've also added a checklist for the props I need to bring to the photo shoot to make sure I don't forget something I've added the location and personally I just love like making it look nice with all the arrows <laughs> it is so satisfying oh and then also I've made a little gear list so the gear I want to bring to the photo shoot and I can literally just check it off whilst I'm packing my camera bag I can export this and then send it to the model so she knows exactly what to expect what to bring what to do for the photo shoot and it's all in one place and what I like as well is that I can invite collaborators on this project so let's say I'll add the model and she'll type in oh I also want a photo of myself maybe with this jacket so if you want to try it, a note I've added the link in the description and you can sign up for free yes Number six, and that is file structure. And when I just started with photography, all my photos were on my desktop. Like they're all scattered around. It was a mess. So what I do now, I always use an SSD hard drive to work from. So I use the little Samsung one, this one. To start off, I have a folder for photos, YouTube, reels, and video, and assets for in the YouTube videos. And with that, I mean little sound effects or little pop-up thingies that I use in my videos. If we go into my YouTube folder, I've named all the folders to their YouTube titles so I can easily find something back. So let's take your next photo shoot should be in a garage and this is one of my upcoming videos but then when we go in that folder you see I have photo and video. So when we go into photo you can see I have a finals folder and a raw folder and in the raw of course you can find all the rolls to the photos and in the finals are the final photos that are already edited and probably ready to send off to the brand or to the model. So then when I go into the video folder I have an A roll folder and with that I mean like A roll is talking head footage 
stitch, like exactly what I'm doing right now, then B-roll or all the like shots to make the video a bit more interesting, like close-up shots of a light or a shot of my camera. And then I have POV and this is the POV footage I add to my videos that I film with my iPhone on my chest. And then when I go into my photos, I have an automotive folder, a clients folder, a Melbourne folder, because that's where I am at the moment portraits and travel. So when I go into automotive, you can see that I have named them all after the cars. Cause if I want to find back a photo shoot that I shot, let's say a GT3 RS, then I can just type in GT3 RS and I find my photos. I have a finals folder and a roll folder. And that is it. Last but not least, and this is something I've done recently, is numbering all my lenses. So I write on the top which millimeter or which focal length it is. And then when I'm on a photo shoot and I look top down into my camera bag, I can exactly see which lenses I've brought. And I've been using this little white marker for it and it just stays on there and it actually looks pretty cool as well. And that is literally it. These are all the seven things that make my life as a photographer a whole lot easier and also more organized. So of course, along the way, I'll be adding more and more tips and tricks. Definitely expect another one of these videos in the future but for now if you want to know more about my workflow I've made a YouTube video about this a little while back but this is actually still all the things I do till this day and that is it so I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and I also hope to see you at the next one okay bye bye doei